Point guards Clark Slacker and Primo Spears can be excellent additions for this Syracuse basketball team. Plus, the women's team fell in a tough one at UConn last night to end their season. All that and more here on Locked On Syracuse. You are Locked On Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome into Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today we are going over two under the radar point guard targets for Syracuse here in the transfer portal. These are a couple of guys who I think Syracuse should definitely go after who are, how should we put this? realistic, right? You know, it's easy to say on here, let's get the best player in the portal on the team, or let's get this player who's number one at his position, right? Now, these are guys who are lower in the rankings, but I feel are good fits for this team and what they need. Plus, this Syracuse women's team fought really hard against UConn last night, but ultimately, Just didn't have enough in the tank. UConn, for the 30th straight year, I believe, goes to the Sweet 16. Plenty to discuss here on the Locked On Syracuse podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today, and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. All right couple of point guards I promised you, and I'm going to deliver on that promise. The first one we're going to talk about is a guy from the Ivy League. His name is Clark Slacker. Do you know who Clark Slacker is? I don't know if you do. The next one you're definitely going to know. You you probably have heard the name Primo Spears, but I don't think you've heard of Clark Slacker. He is the number 106th rated player currently on on three in the transfer portal right now talk about underrated potentially i mean it doesn't get outside the top 100 this guy last year was all ivy league he averaged 18 points a game and more importantly he shot over 40 percent from three 42 percent to be exact. And I know what you guys are all thinking right now. I mentioned Clark Slacker. He's from Penn. He's a point guard. He's, you know, lowly rated. Can he translate his game into the power six? Right? He puts up these crazy numbers in the Ivy League. I get it. I think he can. I think it's certainly possible. And the reason why is because he's played decently well against power six competition. This season, he had 11 points against Villanova in an upset win. And he also had 17 points against Kentucky. So he averaged 14 points a game against those two teams. I'm not saying that if he were to come to Syracuse, he would average 14 points a game. But maybe that would alleviate some concerns that just because he's an Ivy League guy, he can translate his game to the next level which is the power six. He also did have a game against Houston where he didn't score, but he only played six minutes. He left the game with an ankle injury early, ended up being fine. I believe he played the next game afterwards. It wasn't a major issue whatsoever. Thing I like about him is obviously he can shoot, but he can create his own shot. He's a good ball handler. He had a nice step back crossover three that I saw against Howard. He got the defender off balance, exactly what you're supposed to do. He stepped back from the right wing and drained it. Obviously, again, that's against Howard, but I told you he can do this against power six competition. He loves to get into the paint and use his floater with the right hand. Absolutely loves it. If you turn on his highlights, a lot of it is that floating jump shot or that floating shot rather. 
And he's surprisingly, because he's only 6'1", 170 pounds, he's surprisingly strong. You'll notice when watching his tape, he can kind of bump into those centers, those, those big, tall trees down low. He can bump into them. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a tough nut, that guy. This Clark Slacker guy is outside the top 100. I'd imagine he's not going to cost too, too much in the transfer portal. But if you look at what Syracuse needs, let's say Judah Mintz returns. Do I think that he, I, I easily think he can be the backup point guard. Easily. He would bring something new to the team. You can also potentially bring him in in situations where you need a three-point shot in the end of the game, right? That's how I see his role if he were to come to Syracuse. I think no matter what, he would be best served as a backup. But Clark Slacker is, uh, how should I put this? I, I think he's a little bit underrated here. I don't know why he's outside the top 100. He's only three stars. When the transfer portal first opened, he was much higher on the list. But as the portal keeps going, more and more players are added on to it. And eventually, players start to slide in the rankings. And Slacker's one of those guys where he's probably getting a little bit disrespected because he's coming from Penn, which is more known for academics. We all know that. Shout out to all the Penn people out here. If you're listening, thank you for tuning in. He's a smart kid. I guess that helps. But overall, I, I, I think that Clark Slacker, you'll find that he is a, a tough guy who can go to the paint, even though he's a little bit undersized in terms of his weight. He can score. He can score off the dribble. Great on the catch and shoot as well. 42% from three. It's shooting, guys. It's the same motion. Yeah, it might be tougher closeouts, but at the end of the day, you can you can take shooting to the next level. You can never, you can. I, I think that Clark Slackard is an excellent fit here. Next guy that we're going to talk about is pretty much the polar opposite. But he is someone who I believe would be a starter. He is someone who can definitely start in Primo Spears. You've definitely heard of him before. We're going to discuss about, we're going to discuss Primo Spears right after this. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. And with the NCAA tournament, obviously, in full swing, Sweet 16 is here. We got to hope that Syracuse is in this position next year because how exciting would it be to bet on FanDuel if Syracuse was in the tournament and you can you can totally bet on them. But anyways, regardless, still so many thrilling and exciting contests and you can cash in big with this deal and you can still bet on some of the four ACC teams that are left. If you have ACC pride, I'll be cashing in on this. And you definitely should too. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. 
Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the streaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome everyone into Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer. We just talked about Clark Slackert, who's currently outside the top 100 in the transfer rankings right now. He's a three-star, in fact. The next one that we're going to talk about is a little bit, is a little bit, he's still underrated maybe, but he's a little bit more well-known. That's the best way to put it. And I've teased him. It's Primo Spears, the guard from Florida State. He's currently number 76 on on three right now in the transfer portal. And guys, as more and more people start to fill into this transfer portal, the ranking is only going to go down. So he's only going to get more perhaps under the radar, underrated, so to speak. Just similar to Clark Slacker, who started off, I believe he was in the top 40 the day the portal opened. Now he's outside the top 100. Similar thing with Primo Spears. This guy is out here trying to collect all the Infinity Stones. For those of you who don't know what that is, watch the movie The Avengers. He has played for Duquesne, Georgetown. It's 10.34 p.m. and Georgetown still sucks. That's the time of this recording. And Florida State last season. So he's, he's going on to his fourth team. And I don't hold that against him because at the end of the day, these are athletes who are making the best decision for themselves. So more power to him if that's how he feels. He wants to go to four different teams in four years, by all means. He can do it. He's going to be a senior next season. The thing with Primo Spears that's opposite of Clark Slacker, and there are many opposites here, is that Spears is proven at the power six level. Right, We know who he is. Last year, he averaged 10 points a game. He is excellent at creating his own shot, but he does it in a more athletic way where his ball handling is impeccable and he really can separate himself from defenders. And last year, he didn't start at Florida State. So if he's looking for a place to start, maybe it's Syracuse if Judah Mintz leaves. But if he were to come to Syracuse, I would think Primo Spears can basically be the Quadier Copeland replacement and be the first guy off the bench. That's if he were to not start. Now, similar, honestly, to Judah, because the player comp I have for Spears is a lesser Judah Mintz. And the reason why I compare the two is because Spears plays the same way, but shoots even worse than Judah Mintz does. Judah Mintz was borderline 30% from three last season. Primo Spears was below 27%. And that's, he he took two and a half threes a game. I know I just threw a lot of numbers at you, so let me repeat that. Primo Spears last season took a little less than three three three-point attempts a game. Okay? So if you do the math, that's about 90-ish. 80 to 90 in that range. And he only made 27% of those attempts. So he's a high volume shooter who is not particularly efficient. But at the same time, this is someone for the last two years has scored in double digits in the power six. He has played against Syracuse. We have seen him before in the dome. We've seen him on the road. He should be kind of familiar. Should be kind of familiar. If he were to come to Syracuse next season, he's not someone who I would peg as all ACC. But can he be a starting point guard if Judah Mintz leaves? Yes. And that's one of the differences I have with Slacker is that I believe that while Spears would definitely be a downgrade, he can start at at this level. And I would have full confidence in him starting. He's kind of a combo guard. He can play point guard and have him and Starling together. You can do that. 
Uh, but honestly, if Judah Mintz were to stay and Primo Spears were to come in, he's essentially Quadir Copeland. That That's sixth guy off the bench coming in. That would be amazing. So those are two underrated, underappreciated, maybe a little bit overlooked transfer portal targets. Clark, uh, Clark Slackert from Penn, 42% from three is the big thing on him. And Primo Spears from Florida State, Georgetown, they still suck, and Duquesne. The big thing with him is that he's proven in the Power Six. He's even proven in the ACC. So we know that if he were to come to this school next season, there's no learning curve to a new conference or anything like that or different type of competition. He can do that. So that is it for... The transfer portal targets for point guards, I'm sure as the offseason goes, we'll come up with more as more and more names enter into the transfer portal. Obviously, there's still a Sweet 16 that's going on. And all those players, well, there's going to be guys that are transferring from those programs. It's going to happen. So there's plenty to look forward to here in this transfer portal. Remember that the Orange have two roster spots currently open right now. Figure you want a center, maybe a guard. If Judah Mintz leaves, you definitely need one of these guys to be the replacement, at least. I don't know if I don't know if Slacker can do it, but you get the idea. All right, now it's time to talk about some women's basketball, their season overall, because it's now over. Tough one against UConn last night. We'll talk about that and the season in general. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Iowa State Cyclones can only be described as a pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch and have really created a lane for themselves entering the tournament as one of the hottest teams in the country they have a date with Illinois this Thursday in the Sweet 16. Take the Nissan Road, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Welcome back, everyone, into Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer. We went over a couple of transfer portal targets for the Syracuse men's basketball team, specifically point guards, guys who might be overlooked, underrated in Clark Slacker, outside the top 100 currently on the on three rankings, and Primo Spears, who's number 76 right now overall in the portal. So these are guys who you would call maybe more realistic than the number one transfer available, who we talked about yesterday, and Maxime Renault from the center from Stanford. Hey, I got to kind of mix it up on here, right? Now it's time to discuss the women's basketball team that lost to UConn in the round of 32 in their building, 72 to 64. Their season is officially over. It was DeAsia Fair's last game in an orange uniform. She does not have any more years of eligibility left. So Syracuse will be without its All American point guard next season. That's a tough one to replace, obviously. When talking about this game, first of all, Syracuse, once again, was the underdog. They were going against three-seed UConn as a six-seed, so it makes sense this time. But they were 20-point underdogs. Guys, 20 points. What is this, football? I mean, I've seen 20 points in football, but even that is pretty rare, especially in the pros. I guess in college you see it. But 20 points between... Two teams in the NCAA tournament, one that is a three and the other that's a six. I get that UConn came into the game not having lost in six weeks, but still, I mean, that was disrespectful 
So shout out to any of you guys that bet on the women's basketball team to cover 19 and a half, I believe was the exact spread. Shout out to you guys out there for being smart. I think Syracuse, ultimately it was a, I can't knock their effort. They fought incredibly hard, but they ultimately just felt a step behind kind of the whole game. Deja Fair took a while to get going. Once again, elevated in the fourth quarter, but first three quarters wasn't really on her game. They just always felt a step behind UConn. UConn throughout the game would, would get like a 10-point lead. And you would think, okay, here, here's where you know the Husties will actually cover that 20-point spread. Here's where they kind of go on that 20 to 2 run. You know, Syracuse would miss eight shots in a row or whatever, or six shots in a row, and you think they can't get anything going. And then the Orange would go on like a 7-0 run and make the game a five-point game with this amount of time left. And they would keep doing that throughout the game. That was kind of the trend. UConn would go up double digits. UConn would go up by 9, 10, 11, whatever. And then Syracuse would score like seven straight points, get it back to kind of manageable. Ultimately, Syracuse would cut it within two in the fourth quarter but they couldn't make the play. What do I mean by that? They couldn't deliver what De'Asia Fair did against Arizona, which was that, I believe it was from the left wing, that or right wing, I think. It was from the wing. De'Asia Fair hit a three with about a minute to go to put Syracuse up two. That was the play of that game. The defining moment. And this time it was UConn that had it. It was KK Arnold from the left wing with UConn up three with the ball. And with 29 seconds left, she hoists up a three. It looks like it's going in. And then it starts spinning around the rim like this. And then boop, drops right in. Ended the season. Ended the year right there. Tough one. Just, uh, they fought so hard all season long. They overachieved their preseason expectations. They kind of faded down the stretch. They're in UConn's house. UConn had gone to the Sweet 16 for a million straight years. They have one of the best coaches ever in Gino Ariema. They have... Paige Beckers, who had over 30 points in this one, their own All-American guard. That's what happens when you get the, when you get into the tournament. Everyone has those great players. They fought hard, but ultimately they just lost to the better team. And I think that you have to tip your cap. I don't. I'm not. I know I'm not wearing a hat, but tip your cap to UConn. They were the better team. Ultimately, if you want to look at the outlook for Syracuse women's basketball, Felicia Leggett-Jack has completely turned the culture around for this team. Completely. Within two years, she inherited a mess. Last year, they were good enough for the NIT. And then this year, they, they start putting the pieces together. And they go on a run. At one point, they were projected to be a four seed in the tournament, which means they would have been able to host both of these tournament games. But kind of faded down the stretch. And then in the tournament, they get a win, lose to UConn. You got to be proud, though. There are, I, I, I always say to people, there's no such thing as moral victories in sports. But that doesn't mean you can't applaud effort and hustle, and toughness, and give respect when you see it. And that's honestly how I feel about this women's basketball team and how they did this year. It would have been nice if they had gone on a farther run, but that's sports. They ran up against a better UConn team. They didn't ex They didn't underachieve in this one. They didn't play down to competition or anything like that. It wasn't like the Duke game that they had in the Dome a few weeks ago. It just sucks because it's De'Asia Fair's last game in an orange uniform. She has no more years of eligibility. She can't come back. 
I wish she could. She can't. They have a couple of top recruits coming in. So, and maybe they get a nice, they get some key players in the transfer portal too. But it would be a lot better of a feeling if Fair was coming back and you can kind of build that hype into next season. But I wouldn't put it past this head coach in Felicia Leggett, Jack. I think she might be the best head coach on campus right now. Just from where she started with this team and where it is now. So ultimately, it was, um, you know, Syracuse loses in the round of 32 to UConn, 72 to 64 last night. It is what it is. You move forward, you regroup, and you try to come back better next season, even if it's even if it's without All American Deasia Fair. That is it for today's episode of Locked On Syracuse. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, click that like button. And if you really liked it, well, it doesn't hurt to subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications so you know right away when I'm dropping the next podcast. Folks, it's been over a month since I've taken over and I've been pretty pleased with the results so far. I hope I'm doing a good job for you guys. I always try to be better, come up with different topics. So thank you. Overall, this is a thank you. Unprompted, by the way. I wasn't planning on doing a thank you like this, but I am. So with that, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be back on Wednesday. We're probably going to do under the radar shooting guards. And then on Thursday, we have another guest coming on the show. So a lot to look forward to here on the Locked on Syracuse podcast. Take care, everyone.